to finding calm in the chaos. I am Denise Sip, and this is my podcast. Hello, 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 everybody. Welcome to another edition of Finding Calm in the Chaos. I'm Denise, and guess what? This is episode, technically, it's episode number 80 of the podcast. Woohoo! Yay, yay, yay. I don't know. I have a button here somewhere. Oh, hey, there it is. There it is, episode number 80. Um, today, I'm going to talk about a few things. I'm really diving deep in some of this stuff, and it's really fun, but... Uh, today, the name of this episode is called Soundscapes, and the reason I did that is because I um, I wanted to talk to people who might be overstimulated. So I have um, OCD and um, also postpartum rage disorder. Uh, it is pretty common, I guess, postpartum if you have OCD diagnosis, but um, I wanted to talk a little bit about being overstimulated. And I've talked about how people uh, always associate angry women, uh, moms, mothers, all of that, right? Wives, with just being angry. Just we're angry. And I don't believe that. I believe that we are overstimulated. And that's something that I've talked about in the past on this podcast. And I think in addition to just every day's life, okay, that moms have to deal with, um, and then once I factor, again, I can only talk about my personal experience, but when I factor in my OCD and my personal experiences, then things get taken away. And I have found that in this trying to listen, trying to live in the moment, trying to connect with people. There's so many things that come with that. And last episode, we talked about listening and just how I can get listening skills and some of the challenges that I have with that with lupus and rheumatoid arthritis. And one of the things that I've noticed that um, are very distracting, and and I'm going to talk about it today, and about a real, very real situation that happened a couple weekends ago when uh, we took Peter to the Brickfest. Um, It was an hour and a half away from our home. It happened literally the day after we had a huge Arctic blast and about 10 inches of snowfall. And I was super worried about the driving conditions when I got there. Now, I have a past in risk management. So I am, it literally ruins for you. It ruins you for life. When you are in risk management, you can't even look at stuff the same way anymore. And so um, I was trying to overcome all of these risk management issues of the conditions of the road, whether or not we should be driving. In addition, also, um, Mr. Sith mentioned to me that I needed to get new tires on my car because I had no tread. So I was trying to explain to him that in my mind with OCD, all I think is is that I'm driving on inner tubes. So I'm I've, there's 10 inches of snow that have fallen more in some places we were driving like i said an hour and a half away it is frigid arctic cold okay we're in sub-zero temperatures so everything is ice and i've got to drive an hour and a half away to go to this brick fest with peter and mr sith um on inner tubes (laughs) on an suv I'm like, oh, I'm like, well, I literally stopped. I was like, wait, what is that noise? I'm pretty sure Buster's under my desk snoring. Um, so it was just, yeah, it is. Um, I'm like, what is that sawing? And it, it's the dog. But these are the things that some people do not realize that create anxiety and stress and moments of complete breakdown. And what happened was, is I have a perfect driving record. I'm gonna be honest with you guys, I'm gonna toot my horn a little bit, right? I have not been to the DMV unless I have to change my address when I moved to this house. And when I got my federal ID, the real ID thing, that's about it. I just mail in mine. I never go, don't have to, I can do it by mail. So um, no driving issues whatsoever, nothing. 
I do, however, have been in three really bad accidents, all caused by other people in extreme conditions. Just saying. So I've also got that factored in. And there's only so much you can like do when you have all of these different things coming at you. So I've got inner tube tires. I'm trying to keep my son safe. We, I need to get him to this event. Um, it's Arctic cold. Um, I'm worried about the road conditions. I'm worried about everybody else who thinks that like it's not a big deal to drive in this weather, which apparently Mr. Sith qualifies for that select group of idiots. Um, but I d- will never understand when people will drive in inclement weather conditions of any sort. Like, it's just another day. It's truly infuriating. I'm not going to lie. Because that is usually what, in my experience, has been what has initiated accidents that have put me and my life at risk. Because all three times my cars were totaled. um, Because of the carelessness of somebody else during inclement weather. So, uh, where am I going with? Let's go. We're going somewhere. This is going to be like an all encompassing podcast, you people. Okay. Uh, friends, we are going big time today. So, I labeled it soundscapes for a reason because, in addition to all of these internal soundscapes that I just described to you, I have external soundscapes as well. And one of those is silence. I know that sounds stupid. Right? You're like, wait, how can silence be a sound? Um, it is. Because what happened is, is that I wanted this event to be something that was a memory for our family. And once again, it'll probably go down in our family history as mom ruining another fucking day. Uh, it's always me. You know, it, it's always me. I, I I know there comes a time when moms just have to be like, you know what, like F you people, it's not just me, it's you, but it's always going to be me. I Nobody is going to accept responsibility at all for anything anymore, so it is what it is. And I've decided that I'm just not going to get upset or waste any more energy on trying to explain to other people how I'm not always the problem. <laughs> it just... Eh, it might be you, but it's for me. I'm tired of having to explain to other people rational issues and why they should be concerning to other people. Because to me, if it's like not concerning to you, then okay, hope you don't die on your way to breakfast an hour and a half and fucking ice and snow. You know what I'm saying? So needless to say, the roads by our house were shitty. Okay. And I was sliding on my inner tubes numerous times. And I'm doing this in this terminology so people understand what I'm thinking of and how it builds in someone with OCD. So I'm in the car at multiple times when I have slipped, fell, had, uh, you know, had issues like um, at stoplights and stop signs, trying to get traction to move forward. Everybody driving around me like it's a, not a big issue. And I'm like, you know, what? look at these idiots, right? Because then risk management mind clicks in. Look at this moron. They're going to find him dead and they'll be using the jaws of life to scrape him out. And he'll all be wondering why. Why did this happen to me? Well, probably because you're driving 45 to 50 miles per hour when it's ice and snow and Arctic conditions outside. But somehow I was an asshole because I was driving under the speed limit and trying to get traction at a red light before I just gassed it up and slid all over the street. You know what I'm saying? That's where I'm at. So I'm so nervous now and my inner dialogue is just not shutting the fuck up that at this point, the soundscapes have like overwhelmed me. I'm slowly telling Mr. Sith And you may talk to your husband this way as well, but I'm like explaining to him my fear little by little, little by little. And you know what I'm getting in return? Nothing. I'm getting silence, which, what do you think is happening now? Now I'm escalating because no one is simply stating it's going to be okay. I know the roads are okay. I got my friend Christy praying for me on the road. I said a prayer. I'm listening to the message while I'm driving. I'm like, oh my gosh. And never once, once did my husband state 
even when I cried when I slid on the ramp onto the highway. I'm in tears now, okay? Because I am just thinking of when I flipped over the ramp on a highway, you know, 25 years ago, and my car rolled down a huge, like, ravine, and I was upside down, and they had to extract me from the car. You know what I'm saying? Like, nothing. I got nothing but silence, which was the worst soundscape I could have had at that moment. Not any comforting words whatsoever. I'm not saying that Mr. Sith is an asshole. It's just in this particular situation, he was an asshole. You know what I'm saying? So I pulled it together. Once we started getting on the highways, the highways were actually clean, but only the center lane was comforting to me because I've been on the outer lanes where the, you know, the ice and the wind has blown in and then there have been issues. So, but let me tell you, the soundscape in your head when you have anxiety, depression, OCD, ADD, all that kind of stuff, okay, is frightening. And then the only way it could get more terrifying is when the soundscape around you with the people who are supposed to love you is freaking silent. All it did was escalate me because I was getting no backup. It's going to be okay. No touching, holding my hand. You know what? You're going to be all right. You got this. We're going to get there. We're going to have a great time. I'm so sorry you're like stressed out. You're, this is going to be okay. I know you've been in the accidents. I know it's scary, but, but, but look, the road's clean. None of it. Nada. Okay. The soundscape was silent which allowed my head, again, it's me, to just rip into this world of we're all going to fucking die in the car. And it's going to be my fault. Because it wouldn't be anybody else's fault. It would be my fault. And I know that some of you out there, because you've sent me messages, this speaks to you. And I'm sorry that it does, because it is fucking terrifying that you cannot shut your damn mind off the soundscape is internal but it's horrible and i wanted to talk about um that situation to to be really honest with you guys that this kind of what sparked this episode was that i need apparently I'm trying to get Mr. Sith to understand that this shit happens and we need to talk. Again, if you guys haven't figured out or a after a year and a half of podcasting, almost two years in July, that the problem with Mr. Sith is communication, you are one step ahead of him, my friends. Um, it is literally the, the death mark in our relationship. He just does not understand as a man, because they're fucking idiots, and a husband, that communication is what is the key to all of this resolution. Like, it is literally the key to resolution. And that it will, like, it would clear up literally 99.9% .9 of our issues. Um, but, you know, he's doing the best he can, because, you know, he's, you guys know I hate that fucking saying anyway so soundscapes are a thing i started l like looking into it and as i'm reading i'm seeing how it is like science okay that a lot of our stress and anxiety and things today come from these constant soundscapes that we're not even aware happens but they affect our emotional and physical well-being especially people that live in urban areas right because you're getting traffic airplanes sidewalk noises industrial machinery that you might not even know exists trains in the background i lived literally like seconds from trains when I lived in the city and I don't even recall hearing them after a time because it's just in this background soundscape and you don't even think about it anymore. But there have been um, a lot of these like amalgamated sounds, like it's like a sound salad, let's just say, right? These soundscapes are in the sound salad and they have been negatively linked to not only the measures of your well-being, but your overall health consequences 
in life. And there have been small studies, but not really big. I was trying to trace the studies here to see how back I can go. But it's really just very early paced, uh, early paced scales with this stuff. But they have a small study that traced traffic noise to worsen cancer outcomes, outcomes and lower birth rates and long-term noise exposure to male infertility, which think about that long-term noise exposure. What would men, where would men be that would create long-term exposure? Clubs, bars, parties, sporting events, all loud events. That's crazy. But it's these crowded urban soundscapes that they've been trying to do these small studies on um, because they they're it's like air pollution. Isn't that crazy? And I know you're like, no, it's not. It's a sound. How can sound be like air pollution? Well, it is strong enough general evidence that in 2022, the United Nations reported uh, noise pollution as a top environmental and health threat. They included health threat in that, which was surprising to me. I'm like, wow, that's crazy. Like, wait, wait, what? But that leads me to believe to into how all of these other uh, soundscapes could be have positive impacts on us because there is a whole plethora of people who believe in like forest bathing, right? Forest bathing for those of you who don't know. So it's spending like this mindful and like sense focused time in nature. You do it in your backyard, listen to the birds, right? Using all your senses, like these auditory elements, right? Um, it's, it's supposed to, if you practice it, it's supposed to be like, these healing potentials okay um it, it, i guess it's not so far from grounding where it's, you're doing grounding for a particular reason but i'm assuming you could ground while you're doing like this forest bathing okay but there have been a lot of uh like south korea there's that means to be where most of the forest bathing like clinical adaptation um nature therapy responses have been from so just trying to figure out that less than like 0.01% of our history has been spent in modern surroundings, right? So the gap between the natural setting and then like the highly urbanized and artificial setting is likely to cause the root of like this stress state in modern people that we just don't know where it comes from. Because most of this research on nature therapy suggests that there's a similar evolutionary reasons for our, this innate ability to be calmed by the outdoors. That, you know, you need to just get out if you're, you're stressed out. And then don't forget there, okay, so that's forest bathing is a positive thing, okay? And then I guess there's also been these forest sounds can lead to feelings of comfort they decrease heart rates. I mean, so just picture like being out in your yard, listening to like fountains, water, specifically water, bird song. Um, it's hard to find that, especially in an urban environment. But, you know, it's, it's too early in these studies to find out like anything definitive. But it's interesting to see how these hearing birds, like, so there was a separate study that found that seeing and hearing birds led to like these day long increases of self reported measures of well being and, and like positive moods for both healthy participants, but also with those with depression. And water sounds, you know, they seem to hold promise for like um, a lot of urban planners and developers are looking to mitigate the effects of noisy cities by using water features. I remember when I lived in downtown Chicago. I lived in the Gold Coast area and I lived in this beautiful little like uh, Victorian apartment uh, dwelling, I guess, but it had a huge courtyard in the middle with a fountain. And I will tell you that even if I remember sitting in my living room during that time with the windows open, that I remember the fountain running. These were like two of the biggest things. I remember the fountain running and the, the clicking of the horses uh, with the carriages from downtown Chicago. I mean, it was downtown Chicago, but they would come around because there was a stable right there. And so they 
I could hear the the clotting of the horses. The clink, 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 clink. You would hear it with the fountain in our little area, courtyard. And then depending on the day, you would hear a lot of beeping or you would hear um, the planes because we were in a flight pattern to O'Hare. It was very easy, but the noises were very... I can really pick them out to tell you what I heard. And so, but I did find the clotting of the horses and the water very therapeutic. It was it was just very relaxing to hear that on the days where it was just super loud. But um, just like soundscapes, um, think about music. They also named music as some of these, how like, you know, you get into... <laughs> You get into a mad mood and you're really shitty. And so you listen to like really violent, heavy music, right? Or you're sad. Let's say you go through a breakup and you literally are like crying your brains out, singing all the sad ass lyrics. We've all done it. Let's be honest. Okay. But if you listen to different musical arrangements, there are so many different like key pitch rhythm melody that your brain that they're saying can pick up different emotional outputs from them okay so uh, i'm trying to think of like one of the examples that they used the sound bathing so forest bathing then there's sound bathing in general so sound baths are so forest bathing is when you're in nature and sound baths are like when they use uh i don't know they say instrument but i guess like tibetan singing bowls which i will note is not really <laughs> of Tibetan origin. It's a uh, like mythologized American invention, just so you know. Um, so if you're using Tibetan bowls, they're not Tibetan. It's that's American nonsense. But I'm not saying it's nonsense because I enjoy listening to the bowls myself, but they're like metallic. Uh, usually they're colorful, right? And they rub them with these mallets and they give you varying pitches depending on their size okay so sort of like glasses filled with water except it's it's a bowl that's colorful whatever you know but these vibrations they're like gongs right and the di what are they called the uh, didgeridoos Dig -dig -dig didgeridoos you know what i'm talking about they make that you know yeah, that <laughs> i know you guys love me because i just will flat out just say that stuff but it's that vibration that is what helps because through that vibration like sound at certain frequencies it provides this distinct like somatic experience right sometimes it's not pleasant you know when you end up like if you're too close like for me I love like being on the bass side of a concert <laughs> but some people they don't like that they don't like that mm, 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 and it's just pounding at you and you feel it i love that freaking love it but or let, let's just picture like a cat that also would create like this sound vibration if they're like laying on you and they're purring you would feel that and you would hear that it's the same kind of like mindful vibration sound that they're talking about here but that actually will so meditation or mindless uh mindless mindfulness sessions with the singing bowls those actually will slow heart rate and lower blood pressure more effectively than if you do it without them so in silence so that brings me to like my car situation i was in there i was having a soundscape issue internally and it was being met with silence. And so it wasn't being effectively dealt with where I could have used an external noise to help or chatter, conversation, condolence, you know, it's going to be all right, um, rather than nothing. And so it, it's just what it is. Um, but unlike, so unlike like music and instrument-based therapy, the benefits of these like vibroacoustics, those are also accessible to deaf people in the community. This is huge because that's why I feel like I like listening to them when I go to bed, which I have to start doing again because sometimes I can't hear stuff that's coming up. Obviously, I have a hearing deficit, but it helps. I can hear that stuff. 
and it just seems to be at a at a the sound that I'm hearing is what's really beneficial and it kind of puts me at at, at ease so that leads me so we're going from the bowls and the sound bowls these you know for lack because we know it's not Tibetan but these Tibetan bowls you move that into these vibroacoustics area and that leads you into the binaural beats okay so now I listen to I used to listen to binaural beats all the time okay basically it's like a hearing illusion it's an ears version of like staring at a black dot in the center of a screen and seeing a color that really isn't there okay but with headphones because you have two different low frequency sounds okay that are played at the same time one in each ear and the brain you know who loves patterns and orders our brain just loves patterns and orders so it, it will try to reconcile the two sounds and in doing so it becomes convinced that it's hearing a third sound at a frequency that matches the difference between the frequency of the two original sounds does that make sense it's really hard to describe it you can look up binaural beats but i find them so comforting because there's really strong evidence that listening to them can enhance certain brave waves it strengthens electric uh electrical electrical activity my god i can't even say that word fast strengthening electrical strengthening electrical there we go strengthening uh electrical activity and it leads to like neural benefits which is huge so um, how does that help me? Which is probably why I really want to try to focus on using these again is because I had talked in the last episode about how I'm having trouble with just memory uh, in in time, like just constantly trying to stay. And I think it's because I'm trying to listen so attentively that I'm I'm kind of like just not paying attention to anything else. And so I feel like I'm missing stuff. But binaural beats show that small uh but like remarkable events right could be help on could have good effects on like working memory uh sorry guys i'm trying to like remember stuff that i've read and then like looking at my notes it doesn't have everything there um but it has effects on working memory creativity attentiveness decrease stress a decreased stress and even sleep so that's why I used to listen to these when I went to sleep and I think it really made a difference so like when you listen to meditation the meditation tracks if you've listened to meditation meditation tracks oh my gosh to go to bed at night you probably like 99.9% .9 were listening to binaural beats and you didn't even notice um one of the biggest uh music like compositions that showcases binaural beats is uh by marconi union it's literally been it's so it was written in oh when was it written <sighs> probably about 10 years ago if not longer i don't know i'm gonna guess i'm gonna say 10 years ago so they wrote this like song called weightless and you can look it up on youtube or whatnot but it is a like this ebb in flow and this pulsating it's like luxury spa music essentially but it's by marconi union it's called weightless if you spa like i do you've probably heard it before because i actually heard it before in a spa it is been claimed or been basically like touted as the most relaxing song in the world it's like eight ten minutes long i'm not even joking but it has literally has been shown to simply listening to that song can slow your heartbeat it's crazy it's crazy but here's the deal sound always has its limits right but there is this evidence that is growing that points to this future um where it's going to play a role in like treatments for tinnitus dementia pain memory issues and and that's huge right but you need to have to take stock of how your personal soundscape is affecting you and your happiness like now and that's what i've had to check because noise pollution is it's a public health issue right and experts are you know they let them they're struggling to solve that stuff 
and you know slapping on noise canceling headphones 25 you know four seven that's not realistic um or you know fashion forward but you pete, pete loves his you know but you can't just wear those all the time but if you can take control of some of it and listen to a soundscape that works for you if your internal soundscape especially is being crazy like you know listening to quiet music instead of a podcast while you're cooking dinner i can't believe i'm saying that because you could be listening to my podcast while you're cooking dinner but if you're stressed out i would prefer that you listen to a binaural beat or some forest music <laughs> some forescaping so that you can listen to that you can find all that stuff on youtube people but Sometimes even if you're at work, if you're somebody who has to go into a brick and mortar and you're still working in an office, bless your heart. But you know what? Hey, if you got to go to the bathroom, close your eyes and play some bird sounds, you got to do what you got to do, right? It, it's just, you know, it's for your own mental health. But soundscapes are super important. And that whole Brookfest trip really, really just like brought me to it. But here are some of the things that I'm trying to, that I think would contribute, knowing, you know, all those different soundscapes and rhythms and sounds and bathing and bowls and all of that stuff, okay? When you factor all of that in, there are some things that I narrowed down that probably I should have done in a better mo way to help not have my breakdown in the car and that was one don't get caught up in the negatives of the world i should have just turned up the music and really just focused on my worship music at the time i should have just been like waiting for some phil wickham to come on if you know you know uh phil is my boy um, and just kind of go with that. I should, I got caught up with the negatives of my internal soundscape. And I can't just rely on Mr. Sith breaking me out of it. Because most likely, he's not gonna. So I can't just keep blaming it on him. That's something he needs to work on if he doesn't want me to keep having these. But in the meantime, if he's not there, I need to come up with a solution for breaking out of that myself and that would be i need to not get caught up with the negatives in my personal soundscape and create something positive in it two i need to know stuff happens don't let stuff determine how my day is going to be i did do that i pulled it out of my ass by you know the time we started driving by the time we got there i was pulled together okay um it is what it is right i was a fool I let something like, well, it's not menial. I don't want to say that it was a menial because driving in hazardous conditions like that can be serious. And I know that because I've had issues in the past with it. But I really needed to just kind of get out of my head that day. Stuff happens. It didn't happen that day. We had a good time. That's all. You know, move on, Denise. Three, be the driving force force and that's part of the deal make the day go the way that i want it right i need to stop relying or waiting for mr sith to step in to help me with this i needed to problem solve it myself which i didn't do until like you know 30 minutes later but you know 30 minutes later is better than not right it's okay to wake up on the wrong side of the bed you just need to figure out how to like snap yourself back in right just that you can adjust it's okay to know that you can adjust the same day make an adjustment and then carry on you don't have to roll out of bed know you rolled out of bed on the wrong side and then just go with it all fucking day you can take some of that and just decide okay that's it it, it, it started off jacked up let's correct it and then just keep moving on it took me like 35 40 minutes to do that but i managed to finally do that and this is the part that I think really is helpful, and that is for enjoy others' joy. Instead of sharing your unhappiness with someone who just isn't having a bad day, let their happiness rub off on you. So I tried to use Peter 
as this is an event that he's really going to enjoy or whatnot. And then just kind of like, I got to drop my shit. We really tend to want to be like, you know, misery loves company. You want to rub that off on other people. But if you see that somebody's having a really good day and they're smiling, like don't like rain on their parade. Let them sunshine on your fucking dampness and try to switch it around. And so, I mean, it took 40 minutes and then, you know, I guess within the hour I was like, way to go, you know, but being more intentional on how I handle it in the future or how you could handle it in the future if you just follow those things, you know? Don't get caught up with the negatives. Shit happens. Be your driving force. You don't need any assistance. It's you. You can control everything that is happening with your response. And then just enjoy others' joy. That's what I got today. So every day is a work in progress. Don't beat yourself up over it. It is what it is. Until next week, lead with kindness. <laughs>